the request of the Greeks in the first part of the Gospel is our request also. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. We come to church, we pray, we make the sign of the cross, we read the Bible, we help the poor because we would like to see Jesus. And then this request will be totally answered on Good Friday, which is roughly two weeks from now. What will happen on Good Friday, according to the Gospel? The veil of the temple will be torn from top to bottom. There is a veil in the temple, and the veil in the temple will be torn from top to bottom. What does it signify? It is not about a physical veil. It is rather the veil that prevents us from seeing the Lord. The veil that prohibits us from seeing who God is. That is the veil that was removed in the temple. And that removal, that tearing down from top to bottom of the veil is actually related to the gospel today, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. So what was seen on Good Friday? What shall we see on Good Friday when Christ is crucified on the cross? Who was present at Calvary? Was it only Jesus? Was it only the Son of God? And the answer, my dear brothers and sisters, is the Father was also in Calvary as much as the Son and the Holy Spirit was present at Calvary at the moment of crucifixion and at the moment of the death of Christ. Hindi lang po si Jesus ang nasa Kalbaryo, ang Diyos Ama at ang Espiritu Santo nandudoon din. Subalit hindi makikita ng mata. How do we see that the Father is there, the Holy Spirit is there? Then we have a revelation. How do you see God? How can we see Jesus? The first language of God is presence. Presence. That is why in the Catechism, we say, that God is present in everything that He has created. God is present not only in the sacrament, but everywhere in the entire universe. I told you last week, it would be terribly wrong to believe that God dwells only in the church, in the temple. Because the whole universe is the temple of God. So, the language of God is presence. And that is why in the Eucharist, He is real presence. And at Calvary, Calvary, God the Father was present. As the Lord said, Father, into your hands I entrust my spirit. When the Lord said, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? It was not that the God is absent. It was rather the Lord was intoning a psalm, which is, which is a an expression of faith about the presence of God. The first language of God is presence. And when He wants to tell you, I love you, He just says to you, I am here. When the Lord wanted to tell us that He loves us, He revealed His name and He said, My name is Emmanuel. God with us. When the Lord wanted to assure us about His love, the Lord said, I will send you the Holy Spirit and I will be with you forever. That is forever present. That is forever being with us. And every time we read the Bible, the Lord's presence is celebrated. And every time we love one another, the Lord's presence is celebrated. The second language of God, 
after presence is obedience. Obedience is not just the duty of the inferior to the superior. Obedience is not just about subservience. Obedience is not just about being under. In fact, obedience does not diminish our freedom. Obedience makes us totally free because the Christian understanding of obedience is to listen. Somebody who listens is actually obedient. That is why obedience is not just the duty of children to their parents because parents must also obey their children in the sense that they listen to their children. Would that this world be composed of men and women who listen? This world is going to be a better place. And why do we have wars? Why do we have broken friendships? Why do we have broken commitments? Why do we live a state of sin? It is really because we have failed to listen. And when we fail to listen, we fail to love because true love listens. You know that with love, with lovers, when they are together, even without words, they understand. You know that with lovers, they whisper their love. But you also know when love is diminished because even if they are together, they are shouting at each other. In other words, the language of obedience has been compromised by anger, by resentment, by resistance, even by revenge. Sir, we would like to see Jesus. If you want to see Jesus, understand his language. His first language is presence. His second language is obedience. He listens. And he loves by listening. He loves us by listening to us. The third language of love, if you want to find God, is benevolence. Benevolence is giving even if you will not be appreciated. Benevolence is being good-hearted even if the recipient is bad-hearted. Benevolence is still giving even if you have been pierced. Where is that revealed? As, we, as the Lord's side was pierced with the lance and then blood and water flowed out from that side, the Holy Spirit was also poured into our hearts. That is the benevolence of God that instead of punishing us, that instead of taking revenge because we have killed God, the Lord sends us the Holy Spirit and continues to give Himself. Brothers and sisters, we can only understand the presence of God in benevolence. Benevolence is being good-hearted. Benevolence is never thinking of evil against others. Benevolence is always saying, I love you and I will always wish you well. No matter what you have done, no matter what you will do, I will still choose to be good. Back to the question of the Greeks. Sir, we want to see Jesus. You want to see Jesus? Do not look at a picture. Do not look at an image. Do not look at a sculpture. Do not look at a painting. If you're looking for Jesus, be Jesus yourself. By presence to your loved one, by obedience because love is obedient, and by constant benevolence, never hating, never choosing to do wrong, never choosing revenge, never choosing resistance, never choosing anger and hatred, but always wishing the best. 
This is the language of God, and this is the language that God uses to manifest Himself. Sir, we want to see Jesus. And Jesus says, where there is presence, where there is benevolence, where there is obedience, there is love, and I am there. 